you're asking about ethical guidelines and it's really um it's a sweeping question because it touches on uh, many dimensions of science and technology these days people are very uh, fixated very concentrated on um, digital technologies but i think we should remember that all technologies have um, an ethical dimension because they change the ways in which we have been uh, conducting our lives in a sense uh, so uh, the, the sort of standard definition of technology is something that enables us to do something that we would not be able to do without technology. That makes it seem as though technology simply follows our intentions, but people often don't ask um, what those intentions are and who's making them. So the very first set of questions, I think, that one has, has to consider in any area of innovation is how is it affecting the prior way, the historical way in which people have been conducting their lives. We see at moments of great revolutionary change in technology that some people are deemed to be no longer useful to society because the work they used to do has been replaced and displaced by the new ways of doing work. This is true ever since the development of the first industrial revolution and the mechanization of labor. So I think that the in societies that today are grappling with questions of inclusion and exclusion, a baseline ethical question is, what are you doing to previous ways in which people conducted their lives? I call this part of something that I call the ethics of invention, that at the moment at which you innovate, there should be a collective reflection on winners and losers in society, on the people who will be helped and the people who will be hurt, and what society is prepared to do to help those who will be hurt. So there is this myth of progress attached to technology and people think since it's all good anyway, why bother with ethics? Because by definition, it's good. And I think that the, the, the more responsible way to proceed is to recognize that big changes always have some people who are going to be left behind, who are going to be hurt, who are not going to be included. Well, of course, these great goals for society, like fighting climate change, those necessarily are in people's minds when when we're talking about technological development, and, and I think they should be. So I've been involved in debates in Europe and in America about these grand challenges confronting society. Um, usually, it's interesting that you bring up poverty, that the the challenges that are named are often themselves somehow technological. You know, climate change is the result of the first industrial revolutions that produced the greenhouse gases. And then people talk about big problems like antimicrobial resistance, but that is a response to the development of antibiotics. So one should also keep in mind that some of these technologies that we develop to fight the problems of yesterday can themselves become problems. Environmental pollution, you know, DDT, one of these chemicals that was deemed to be very safe and effective for what it did, and it was safe and effective for what it did, but people didn't consider that there are ramifications and they didn't consider the ecology of innovation. So today we're a little bit smarter and we understand that it's not just intervening in a pipeline and then everything goes just the way we predicted. And there's no solution to this because there will be surprises when we develop technology. So take something like the ozone hole, which has been significant for Chile because of its geographical position, right? I mean, that the southern part of Chile is, is exposed. But when those ozone depleting chemicals were first introduced, right? I mean, people thought that they were so chemically stable that nothing bad could happen out of them. We couldn't have known. But I think that the what this brings home to us is that we need to keep monitoring our technologies. And also we use this 
first person plural pronoun very carelessly. We say we all the time. And I think one of the things that's important to keep reflecting back on is who is this we? Uh, you talked about the third world and about developing countries. They're often not in the driver's seat when it comes to technological development. And yet the consequences, I mean, today everybody recognizes that the consequences of climate change will fall disproportionately on the people who are too poor to do something about it. They can't just buy another house at a higher elevation or something like that. And you know, so their innovation becomes a challenge for democracy. How does one keep on monitoring the consequences, the impacts, the implications of progress in such a way that draws in the people who will be displaced, who will be the ones who are on the front lines being affected? That is an ongoing set of issues. One can't propose a formula to solve it. There's no algorithm to, to make people more inclusive, but it is a concern, I think, that the legislature has to keep in mind. Mm -hmm.